welcome to another episode of the car girl show with jesse and my co-host janice hi there hi how are you i'm awesome today (laughs) me too in downtown toronto yeah it's actually quite quite a nice day today for a change so beautiful yeah um so today we're going to be talking about a awesome topic because as a business owner myself and you know, working with dealerships, everybody kind of suffers from the follow up. Yeah. <laughs> right. So I, I want to really pick your brain today because you are the expert when follow it comes up to queen. BDC. You're the follow up queen. <laughs> I've learned so much from Janice. Um, and I want to kind of share with our audience some of those tips that you've taught me along the way and um, that really work, right? Sure. And this, uh, you know, don't forget our, our show is automotive specific. We're here to help um, yeah. the car industry. We're here to help uh, people on the floor. Uh, the front lines of automotive retail is what we're all about. Right. Um, and even managers. I mean, like, you know, every, this is something that everyone needs to really understand about what a follow-up system actually entails, right? And I think in automotive, there's lots of turnover. There's, um, there's lots of attrition going on. There's people leaving the industry. There's new people coming in. So I think what's old um, is new again. And I think we need to revisit processes and things that have worked in the past. Yeah. And like we're really taught how to you know what the sales process is from beginning to end and that is like ingrained in you on, yes. on the sales floor yes. right and how to close the sale that's another one it's all about the closing 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 but but what happens when really... the customer takes delivery of the car exactly. some dealerships do have a good process in place the manufacturer the oem certainly has a process in place i'm talking about strictly for sales people Um, One, your number one, so I'm talking about a process that starts after delivery. Okay. All right. Yeah. So one of the things, and I used to teach uh, introduction to automotive sales. I used to teach um, doing a good delivery. So going back to that, one of the things after you deliver the car, if you deliver the car in the morning, follow-ups in the afternoon. Your first follow-up, same day. I would would assume like give it some time and maybe the next day, no? No, because what happens, and if if you've been selling cars for any length of time, you'll know exactly what I'm saying here. You don't do your follow-up. You don't call the customer right away after they drive off the lot with the car. Where do you see them? You see them in service. Why? Because there's a problem, there's an issue, and they're coming back. So get in front of that. The first thing that you can do on a delivery is get in front of that. Um, where you call right away. So I deliver a car in the morning. I'm calling in the afternoon. Hey, Jesse, just thought I would check on your new Santa Fe. Um, how's it going? Did you have any questions? Did we forget anything while you were right. here? That is and good. That's still, good they're service. they're still excited, right? Because like they yes. just got the car and yep. still has that you know, new car smell, the, hopefully. <laughs> could be the time to plant a uh, uh, seed for referral as oh, well. Oh, yeah, when they're happy. Right. But who hasn't done this where the customer comes right back? I forgot my sunglasses in, in the car. Now, if you follow a good delivery right. process, the customer won't forget anything right, in the car. Right, but it happens. It's happened to me. But Or they have a question or something that you didn't cover. So it starts right there. Yeah. So you deliver the car in the morning, uh, the follow-ups in the afternoon. You deliver it at night to the follow-ups first thing the next day. Okay. So it's having a process like that where you check, where you check it off. Okay. Your next um, follow-up which is staying close. And this is something the car girls, my company offers as a process. We're doing this for dealers and it's going to be part of that new product. I was telling you about that, um, that includes a a follow up life cycle for the dealership customer. Oh, right. Okay. But so what what is that about exactly? Like um, this is where we're going to offer dealers, um, a follow up system where they can enroll their customer in our follow up system where we're calling the customer and includes mailings it includes actually a really exciting gift uh, with our partner our mail our canada post partner um so it's it is really right. exciting program details are going to be on our website in our new um uh, car girl superpower piece oh okay <laughs> so more to follow on that but um one of the things that i think and it Hey, not with the cargo. If you have a BDC that or service or sales could do this, but I think it's important is a three day follow up by the BDC. So it's not something that relies on the sales. I was going to ask, like, what if the customer didn't find the experience to be 
as wonderful as we Are they going to tell the hope. salesperson? The, I mean, I would think yeah. that they're not going to tell the person. And I wouldn't have, this, you know, say you yes, are awful Jessie. when they call. Yeah. So, And that speaks back to even having unsold follow-up. What right. if the customer uh, or the prospect didn't love the salesperson. Right, and that happens where it just wasn't a fit. They and they didn't just fit. didn't click. And the only person to follow up is the salesperson. So this speaks to the same kind of thing you're talking right. about. There's power in third party calling. There's a power in a different voice. It works. Um, so we call it three to four days after delivery. It's a really good uh, time frame because okay. they haven't done their um, sales satisfaction index survey from the manufacturer. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a time to visit that with the customer. Hopefully they've received it. So depending on the process from your OEM, let's find out people, when is that survey going out? That's when I would time it. When that's falling into the customer's inbox, it's top of mind. Most people, um, if they had a great experience, not very many will fill out a perfect survey. It's when they had a bad experience you're going to hear from them. But they will if they're asked. Okay, so let's, there's nothing wrong with asking the customer to give you a good survey. You guys, you need them. You need this SS. You need your SSI. Yes. Maybe at this time now, I think the Google review is actually on delivery. But if we need to plant the seed, we could for that as well. Yeah. Especially with online reviews becoming more sure. and more Absolutely. important. Um, with people doing all their research yeah. online, they're looking up dealers beforehand. They are reading your reviews. Pay attention to that, dealers. We could do a whole show oh, man. just on That's that. Whole other thing. And yeah. how to respond. And just respond, period, right. to your Google reviews. But So we're talking about a four-day, a five-day follow-up call to the customer to check in, hey, did you see that survey coming in from Honda? Yeah. It's really important. It's really important to your salesperson, John Smith. It would make a difference to him if you could help him out. So it's easier for the BDC, it's easier for me to ask the customer to give you a good rating. Is there any reason why right. you and couldn't I, fill out that survey And a lot correctly? of people, kind of, they don't like to ask, right? The I don't sales know person why. Yeah, like the salesperson, like they're yeah. shy to ask someone yeah. to, hey, say customer, some nice things about the me. The customer does not mind uh, doing it if they had a great experience. They have to be asked, though. And yes. I've made these type of calls, and I've had the customer go and get the um, email from their deleted items oh, and really? fill it out, and let's get that uh, survey in uh, for the sales person so yeah. that's Great just points. one reason for that follow-up okay and that if your manufacturer um, uh, doesn't want you soliciting surveys then maybe that isn't something you do either but um, but it's it's a touch point um, to let that customer know at three days at four days at five days we haven't forgotten about them is everything okay? Right. A lot of times I find myself maybe sweeping up something from the sales department. I was supposed to have an extra key. Um, floor mounts were supposed to be in yeah. that came with the vehicle. Something wasn't installed. Uh, they had a question about an item. And even, I mean, what about just scheduling their first service appointment? Now, let's talk about first service because a lot of That's, dealers are, are doing this. They right. want that first service scheduled on delivery. Right, like So schedule the first service on delivery. Yes. I've seen it cause a multitude of problems. Uh, one, of the thing, one of the things, if the, if the dealer's DMS, if your dealer management system has... Um, an algorithm in place that's looking at last service date, last appointment date, um, mileage driven, and you set that first appointment, which is kind of a fake appointment, because the customer doesn't know exactly when they're going to be due, how many kilometers or miles they're going to be driving. Yeah. They don't know exactly when they are going to be due for that first service yeah. and what day is going to be available for them. Yeah, eight, so like with Toyota, it's 8,000 kilometers. Oh, yeah, I'm going to be at 8,000 kilometers next September, a Tuesday at 10. That works for me. Play, I mean, right, you, you life just... doesn't work this way. So what happens is they set the appointment in the system, and then if the system has a forecasting or reporting system where it's pulling up um, people due for service customers, it's not pulling those people up because right. the system thinks an appointment's already been made for them, and it hasn't. So I've just okay. seen this turn into a bit of a mess um, because the OEM, the manufacturer, wants the dealership to set a, a date on delivery. Right. They're doing that, and then the customer isn't being pulled properly into mm. forecasting, and then they don't get the reminder call, and then that all-important first service, the kind customer's calls, going, yeah. going sometimes to a third-party provider, you know, the big yes. triangle store, right? Costco, 
Walmart. I mean, ever you know, Quick Lube, whoever's Where, uh, yeah, whatever. You know, the Lube Factory. Yeah. Uh, Meneke or whatever, whoever's got the sign out. Right. Versus coming back uh, to the dealership. Okay, and we know and that. And once they start going somewhere else, they're a lot less likely. They're to establishing ever come. a relationship with a third-party provider. Right. We don't want that to happen. Yes. We want that all-important first service. That's why, and again, if we're talking about follow-up process, so day one, day four, we plant the seed. We let, this is where to introduce the customer care center, which is your BDC, okay? And by the way, dealerships, BDC is not a customer-facing term, just like we don't say gross or dealer trade or let's keep that term. It's yes. customer care. They don't know what that means. <laughs> talking, it's customer care when we're talking to our customer. It's BDC internally. Right. So, you know, the entire dealership can understand right. what the business development department does. does yeah. When we call the customer, it's customer care. So customer care calls at four days, five days, whatever that process is. Yeah. They're asking for an SSI. Email. Okay, that's something else that I love to see as a touch point here. Let's confirm email. How many times Absolutely. have we seen the wrong gets, email address? Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Or the number put into the wrong field and stuff. I mean, like this is the time, like you said, to be collecting the data, the correct yeah. data, so we can yeah. use it later. Let's do some data verification here. Exactly. Make sure we've got the email address right. Yes. Let's ask for that SSI and let's plant the seed. So here we can say, Mr. And that's customer, where the I see you're driving continues yep. i see you're driving yeah. about 2,000 kilometers a month it's going to put you in month four is when we're going to see you for that first service um so that first check-in yeah. so mr customer that's september we're going to be calling you around august is this the best number to get you um, in case there is a recall some information that you need to know about quickly what's another number right because salespeople um F and I office, financial services office are, you know, not always putting in all the phone numbers. There's another tip for you to get all those phone numbers in the DMS, please. <laughs> so and in the right field. Let's just recap because we've given you a lot of information. So let's just do a quick recap before we uh, conclude this episode. So you're saying first thing is that the salesperson should be following up just to make sure that everything is okay. Day, day one, one, either. Day one. Yeah. either in the afternoon yes. or the following morning, morning. Yeah. right? And this also, we touched on this on another episode, which is in the link, uh, in the comments below here, um, t when we talked about branding, right? And that being part of uh, part of your branding and, and making sure you're taking care of your customers, right? So that's that's number one. And then number two is on day four, I believe, right? And this is where your that's BDC... That's a BDC follow-up. And I like a follow-up for the salesperson. And this is a follow-up you know, most dealerships are having, have a CRM. They do have a process in place where the salesperson is calling, let's say day two, day seven, day 30. But who has ever looked in the CRM, look under a salesperson name and it's all red because they haven't done any other follow-up. So I do Absolutely, like to yeah. put a process in that works without the salesperson. Okay. Um, again, because of turnover, because salespeople get busy, because salespeople aren't great at follow-up. Yeah, um, from the and, start. Yeah, and get in front of yeah, the sales definitely. process. Well, that is immensely helpful. I know for ah. just my own knowledge, I hope we've been able to provide you guys with some uh, really good tips here. On follow-up. Um, on follow-up, yeah. Uh, please show us some love in the comments yeah. below. Make sure like you it. share this, like it, show some support. We'll continue doing this and providing you weekly uh, tips on things news that are you relevant use. to your success at the dealership. Automotive retail. News you Baby. can use. Exactly. <laughs> Till next time. Thanks, Take Thanks care, Jessie. everyone. Thanks, Thanks. Janice. Okay.